But now it gives me a great privilege <laughs> and honor to introduce my sister in comedy, my one of my closest friends. You've seen her <laughs> number one TED Talk. You've seen her on different TV shows. She's an inspiring comic and activist. Please welcome Maysoon's Diet, everybody. Yeah. So, um, hi, I'm Maysoon Zayed, and uh, for those of you who can't see me, I look like the lost Kardashian, um, and I have been stuck in my house since March 13th, and as Sammy and Dean mentioned, comedians are desperate, desperate for attention. I'm so desperate, I literally put a cat on my eye. <laughs> cat on my eye. That's how that's how much I am uh, craving attention because um, the pandemic has been really interesting for me because I got divorced. Now, some of you are like, wait, she was married? I understand that this is shocking <laughs> to people because for those of you who don't know me, I have cerebral palsy. I shake all the time. Basically, I'm a disco queen. And um, most people think that disabled people are like happy snowflake angel babies that never grow up and never get married. And like, I vibrate. I'm the perfect first wife, second wife, and third wife. But September 4th, I got rid of my chef Yuji. I used to call him chef Yuji because he was a chef and a refugee, ergo a chef Yuji. Now I call him Borat. And, um, <laughs> and I, I had caught him in Gaza. I, I got married when I was 33 because I was a bridesmaid 17 times. I spent $28,000 on my friend's weddings. I wanted to make my money back. So I went to Gaza. I caught a husband, brought him back to America. And then like, he had this one habit that just really grated on me. And, and I just had to get rid of him during COVID because of it, because it just, it just wouldn't stop. And it was, it was the breathing. It was like, inhale, exhale, <laughs> inhale, exhale. I'm like, dude, can you stop for like five minutes? I did when I was born and I'm totally fine. <laughs> so we get divorced, I'm footloose and fancy free. And like, I've never been a fan of marriage because marriage is a racket and you have to avoid it at all costs. Married people are just trying to like trick you into their hell, do not get sucked down. It's a trick, right? So I was like super excited that I was divorced. And I was like, this is amazing. I now live alone in a pandemic and can't stand on lines and no longer have toilet paper or paper towel. Or if I slip in the bathroom, there's nobody to find me. And then I started doing what everyone should never do, but I know you all do it. I started like spying on my ex's new life. <laughs> so I was like, all right, Borat's gone, this is really fun, party in the USA. Then I was like, pandemic in the USA. Then I was like, oh no, I can't go out because like, you know, Clan Clown is doing these big rallies and everybody's sick, so I'm stuck at home. So I'm just gonna go on Chef Yuji's Facebook and Instagram and just check in and see how he's doing. Cause I was like curious, <laughs> like who do you start dating after the lost Kardashian? Like I was basically, you know, Sarah Jessica Parker's Carrie from Sex in the City. And he was like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. He was basically <laughs> a Dementor who sucked all the joy out of every room he ever entered. So I was like, I wonder what Chef Yuji's up to. Let me check and let me tell you what I found. Chef Yuji has an Insta family. Oh, that's right. Chef Yuji who came to America with no skills no language, no dream, got divorced from me and immediately started dating a Macedonian former sex worker turned boxing coach who I like to call boxitute, but I can't because that's slut shaming. So instead I call her Melania in Tutti Frutti. So like Melania in Tutti Frutti is the new Becky with the good hair. And I call her Melania because she looks like Melania Trump, I kid you not. And she has a daughter named Tutti Frutti and Arabs call mother of um, so she's Melania and Tutti Frutti. Arab girls, this is the new Becky with the good hair. You have to use Melania and Tutti Frutti. Anyway, I'm spying on Melania now and I see her sister, Gordana. 
And I'm like, okay, this is cool. Her sister's the same age as me. I don't feel bad. And then I realized that's her mother. Oh. That's right. Uh, Melania <laughs> and Judy Fruity's mother is my age. She's a grandma. And Melania is 26 years old. So I'm now stalking Chef UG with his new Insta family. And they're going on every date he wouldn't go on with me. So I would be like, hey, Chef UG, I have three days off. Let's go to Costa Rica. And he'd be like, I know like to fly. TSA always groped me. I know go to Costa Rica. I'm on Instagram. They're in Costa Rica. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not bitter. It's totally fine. I'm very happy that he found his own Melania. And I've been thinking a lot about Melania. And I'm going to put money on this. She's going to be the next Bachelorette. Yes. You know it's true. <laughs> that chick is going to leave the White House. She is going to sign those divorce papers. She don't care that she's not getting nothing in the prenup because she is going to get some mad reality cash. She's going to be the bachelorette. And when she sends people home without a rose, she's going to look at them and say, you know, be best. I really don't care. Do you? And she'll send them home <laughs> and she'll make buckets and buckets and buckets of money. And um, the Joe Biden thing has been really interesting for me because I always swore that I did not need a white savior. And apparently I did need a white savior and his name was <laughs> Joe. And I'm super excited about it. And I'm also excited that Kamala is brown. And it's like, I don't actually get to claim her because she's South Asian and not Arab and black and not Arab. And you can be both of those things, but she's neither. And I'm still like, but she's brown like me. And that's my new goal, right? Because now that I'm single, I realize that marriage doesn't really suck that much. Mine just did. So now I have goals and my goals are Kamala goals because she married a dude who already had grown kids. So she got the Insta family without having to deal with like the bitter baby that wants mommy and daddy to get back together. So now my goal is to find like a really, really sad, lonely, like 55 <laughs> to 65 year old with grown children, no dead wife, and no ex that he still pines for. And I want the kids to come up to me and be like, we just want daddy to be happy. Ever since mommy cheated on him, he's been so sad. And then there was you. And we want you to take all of his money and leave none for us because we just want him to be happy. So that's my new goal. I'm working on that. And um, no, I love the pandemic. Uh, Athir talked about hair. I have um, a lot of hair. And I decided to risk my life for eyebrows. So like, I'm one of those high risk people that if I get COVID, I'm dead, it's over, right? And people will be like, Yomha, it's her day. But anyway, I'm trying to avoid it. But the one thing I was willing to totally, totally fucking die for was two eyebrows. Because by like <laughs> week six of the pandemic, my two eyebrows had connected in a way that we're not allowed to connect with people. I look like the love child of Frida Kahlo and Bert from Sesame Street. And so it was June 19, three months into the quarantine, when I finally was like, if I die, I die. And I went to the woman who threads my eyebrows and I was like, you got to keep them separated. And, and she did. But I haven't risked my life for waxing. And prior to the pandemic, I used to get dipped in wax from my nose to my toes. And they would just rip. And so now basically I'm a hobbit. Um, but it's good for the winter. I'm warm. I don't, I don't need a parka. I am the parka. Um, yeah. And so I'm going to wrap up. Um, by talking about the Haram police 
this is an oldie but goodie and I've spent a lifetime dealing with the Haram police because apparently getting divorced is a no-no when you're disabled and I've had a lot of people like come on my Facebook page and be like you're gonna die alone and be eaten by your cat you should have just let him have a sister or wife and I'm like okay no um, so for those of you who don't know what the Haram police are, they are bitter middle-aged Arabs who troll Facebook to shame Muslims or just Arabs of any faith um, for being sinners. And I am a Halloween loving Muslim. My cat Beyonce dressed as a dumpster fire this year. It was a big hit. I love Halloween. I posted some pictures and this woman named Fatma came on my page and she was like, Maysoon, I love you. You very, very funny. <laughs> but if you keep hell winning, you'll go into hell. And I was like, okay. So I let it simmer. Two days later, I come back and I'm like, hey, Fatma, um, I scoured the Quran. There is no mention of Halloween, jack-o'-lanterns, or candy corn. Ergo, Halloween is not haram unless you eat gummy bears. Boom. So Fatma, who apparently has nothing else to do, comes right back. And she goes, yeah, you funny, you funny. You ain't going to be funny when you're burning in the head. And I was like, whoa, that escalated quickly, Fatma. So I was like, hey, Fatma, let's change the subject. How's your husband's liquor store doing? <laughs> without missing a beat, she typed back, Alhamdulillah, we're so busy for Halloween. My name is Mason Zayed. Next year in Jerusalem, inshallah. Thank you so much for supporting the 17th Annual New York. I don't know if you're